In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with your spirit. spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us now call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, then the seed for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. For Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Jehoiakim was 18 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Nehushta, daughter of Elnathan of Jerusalem. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, just as his forebears had done. At that time, the officials of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, attacked Jerusalem and the city came under siege. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, himself arrived at the city while his servants were besieging it. Then Jehoiakim, king of Judah, together with his mother, his ministers, officers, and functionaries, surrendered to the king of Babylon, who in the eighth year of his reign took him captive. And he carried off all the treasures of the temple of the Lord and those of the palace, and broke up all the gold utensils that Solomon, king of Israel, had provided in the temple of the Lord, as the Lord had foretold. He deported all Jerusalem, all the officers and men of the army, 10,000 in number, and all the craftsmen and smiths. None were left among the people of the land except the poor. He deported Jehoiakim to Babylon and also led captive from Jerusalem to Babylon the king's mother and wives, his functionaries, and the king chief men of the land. The king of Babylon also led captive to Babylon all 7,000 men of the army and a 1,000 craftsmen and smiths, all of them soldiers. In place of Jehoiakim, the king of Babylon appointed his uncle Mataniah king and changed his name to Zedekiah. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The response is, for the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. For the, For the glory, glory of your name, O Lord, Lord, deliver us. O God, the nations have come into your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. They have laid Jerusalem in ruins. They have given the corpses of your servants as food to the birds of heaven, the flesh of your faithful ones to the beasts of the earth. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. They have poured out their blood like water round about Jerusalem, and there is no one to bury them. We have become the reproach of our neighbors, the scorn and derision of those around us. O Lord, how long? Will you be angry forever? Will your jealousy burn like fire? For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Remember not against us the iniquities of the past. May your compassion quickly come to us, for we are brought very low. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Help us, O God, our Savior, because of the glory of your name. Deliver us and pardon our sins for your name's sake. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, 
and we will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not drive out demons in your name? Did we not do mighty deeds in your name? Then I will declare to them solemnly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evildoers. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house. But it did not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine, but does not act on them, will be like a fool who built his house of sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. When Jesus finished these words, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today is finally the conclusion of the Sermon on the Mount. Before that, uh, please join me in greeting Father Kevin today. He is celebrating his ninth anniversary of his ordination to the priesthood. Um, he should actually have said the Mass today on his anniversary. But please uh, remember him and uh, offer... Um, short prayers uh, for him, for his intentions, as we join him in thanking and praising God for his uh, gift of priesthood today on his anniversary. So, as I said, uh, finally we have reached the end of the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, we have been reading the past few days, you know, uh, the Beatitudes, um, all the others, love your enemies, uh, all of those things that the Lord said. Um, ending with this narrative today, which is a very fitting conclusion of what the Lord said. There is a big difference between knowing and doing. And so Christ used a very powerful example of a solidly, of a very sturdy house and set solidly on rock. Same thing with our spiritual life. Uh, there's a big difference between uh, wishing to be holy and saints and really doing things to become holy and saintly. Same thing with a house. A house does not come to existence by simply hoping and wishing it to appear. You build it. And a house becomes solid and sturdy if you decide to make it that way. One of the criticisms of that Christ hurled against the Pharisees and the scribes were that they knew a lot. They knew the law. In fact, all of those laws, not just the Ten Commandments. But there was a big difference in what they know and what they did, or what they knew and what they did. They know that they should love their neighbors, but they didn't. They know that they should not take advantage of the poor but they took advantage of the poor. So there was that great divide, kind of, between what they know and what they did. And so Christ reminded his disciples, well, for those who would like to follow me, this is what I am asking you. There has to be a consistency between what we know and what we say and what we do in life. And that's exactly what we should be doing. There's a big difference between knowing that I should come to church on Sunday and really coming to church on Sunday. Knowing that I should not bear false witness against others and really telling the truth. Because just simply knowing things sometimes um, doesn't really amount 
to anything. I could tell you, for example, how uh, to bake a cake because I have read the recipes, I have watched videos of how to bake a cake. I can recite to you the procedures, but I haven't baked any cake at all in my whole life. I know, but there's a big difference between knowing and doing. So, same thing with our spiritual life. How do we, come, do we become genuine? How do we build a very solid house set in a very solid foundation? We do things. We make it happen. How do we become holy? We do things. We make it happen. How do we become generous and forgiving? We do it. We make it happen. We don't simply know it. We do it. We perform it in our lives. And that is why I said that the image that Christ used in the Gospel today to conclude this Sermon on the Mount is a very powerful image because it talks about the foundation of our spiritual life. That to become genuine and authentic followers of the Lord, knowing does not amount to anything. Doing is. Because in the end, you know, when we come face to face with the Lord, remember in the Gospel, towards the end of the Gospel of St. Matthew, when the Lord said, well, I was hungry. You gave me food. Christ didn't say, I was hungry and I was happy you thought of me. No, I was hungry. You gave me food. Knowing and doing. So in our Mass today, that's what we pray. Lord, please, bless me. I know that in my heart I believe in you. But please translate this belief of mine from my mind and my heart into an authentic life of Christian discipleship. So that whatever I know, whatever I believe in my mind, whatever I believe in my heart, is concretely translated and manifested in the way I live my life. I want to become your true and authentic disciple. Not simply telling others of who you are by my words, but primarily proclaiming you to others, not simply by the words I speak, but primarily by the life I live. With sincere and trusting hearts, let us bring our prayers and petitions before the Lord, and let the response be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, the Body of Christ, may the Lord's call to deeper conversion bear fruit in all our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For government officials, may the Lord guide their decision-making in accordance with the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all who have been displaced from their homes due to war, violence, or food scarcity, may the Lord give them hope and a safe haven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all members of our faith community, here and at home, may the Lord help us continue to grow in charity and hospitality. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all who are sick, especially Dennis Donovan, may Christ, the divine physician, see their need and bring their strength and comfort let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those who have died, may the Father welcome them into his heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Today we remember in a very special way all fathers who are enrolled in our Father's Day Novena. All fathers are both deceased and living that God would bless them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the intentions of Father Kevin on the occasion of his ninth anniversary of his ordination to the priesthood. 
for him and for his intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And we pray also for Gerald Griffith and Marina de Fernandez. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of us in this celebration, for those who asked for our prayers, those whom we promised to pray for, and for all the intentions that we hold dear in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Good and gracious God, listen to the prayers of your people, which we bring to you, trusting that you answer them in accordance to your divine mercy. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Blessed our Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread you offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us our bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are the Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the divine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Let us now pray that may sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God Almighty Father. May the, the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, good and the good of all his holy church. church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its actions, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ O Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them, them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just that you deny our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, the thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praise is at nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founder of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them and make them fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one with the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and for the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, bread, and forgive and us our trespasses. trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from the evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. And everyone at home, we greet each other with the peace of Christ. Peace to everyone. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be Let us now recite our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, 
We ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ, O Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you.